Well, good morning from Tucson. Today is a beautiful day out here. The funny thing is, yesterday was cloudy, and yesterday was the only day I ever put sunscreen on. <laughs> These are the pieces that will hide the wires. I know a lot of people have said, hide the wires, I can't stand it. Well, just for you guys, we're gonna hide the wires. Um, we stained this yesterday, this is looking good. It matches the rest of the color of the wood. Looks like it's drying. We'll put some uh, water-based uh, poly, poly acrylic up there. That was a recommendation from Wander Booming, who, by the way, is completely booked up for 2019 for uh, uh, bus builds, so. You, you know, I'm so, I, when he told me that, I was so proud of him and I, I took a little pride knowing that when we first met he said that's what he wanted to do and you know, now he's, he's, he's all booked up. So he met the right people and you know, did some generous work over at the van build and you know, he's uh, gotten back tenfold what, what he's given, you know. Um, good lesson for everyone. So today we're just going to continue on. We have a... Uh, Another bus coming by, a mechanic. First time I'll be meeting him uh, today. He's gonna help me uh, put in the uh, gauge. I haven't ever done one of these, but it uh, should be pretty simple. The gauge hooked up to the vegetable oil tank. I'll put it over there somewhere. And then um, I think also carrier bearings. Those are the things that hold up the drive shaft. <laughs> There's also a little bearing in there so it can spin around. So probably that. And then uh, we will work on the inside, I'll put some more paint on this piece and get those pieces all buttoned up, make this thing look like a million bucks. Great news, guys. We have some visitors, Carissa and Dalton. How's it going? And uh, these guys were nice enough to come on down here and, and just say, hey, we want to meet you and meet people. And uh, we got a bus of our own. And uh, Dalton is a mechanic, so he's going to be wiring in that pesky level sender that I put in there. The and. Uh, we have a gauge for it from the same manufacturer. So do you want to tell us how this thing works? So it's pretty simple. The fuel level sensor that he put in, the sender, it just has one wire coming off of it and an extra ground just to make sure you don't have any static charge. The one wire is your signal wire. This gauge is marked really nicely so it just says S for signal. So that's the longest wire that we have to run. The ground wire will just go right to the dash and then the ignition power will pull right from inside the dash from something that's keyed on power, and then headlight power right there, and that's all that gauge needs. Awesome. It sound, it, you make it sound so easy. It's pretty simple, <laughs> but it's different when you're applying it to the car. So right. There's, there's a difference to a diagram and actual application. Diagram's pretty easy, application takes a little more process. Awesome. <laughs> and so because it is so hard to see in here, guys, it's uh, about as dark as night in here, so it's gonna be extremely hard to, to watch exactly what he's doing. Uh, we'll check in with him in a little bit. Well guys, I've got one of two armrests loaded up. I'm going to take these into a more dust-free environment, stain them, and then put some epoxy on them, and then I'll bring them back over here to the bus in a couple of days. Alright, fast forward to most of the wires connected. So do you want to walk us through what you're doing? We still have one more ground to do outside on the level cinder itself, but We've got all our wires that we need inside the bus ran to our location of our new gauge. So, like I said, the three wires here that you need for the gauge to work and then the one illumination wire. Because Jax doesn't run his headlights off, he runs them all the time, we're just going to use the same ignition power to run the illumination. So I just have a little pigtail to change it from one wire to two, and then all the other connections are right here. So I'm just going to start making these connections. And my favorite way to do this, go ahead. I was going to say, so if I were, if I had the bus on and then I turned my lights off, the gauge would then turn off as well, or just the illumination? Just the illumination. If, oh, okay. If you were to wire that, that illumination wire to the rest of your lights. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you run your lights all the time, so I'm just going to run it to ignition power, and this will be illuminated all the time. Okay, cool. So it's just, it'll turn off when you turn the key off, and that, that's all you really need. Let there be light. Yep. So, one of my favorite ways to do these connections is just to rip off the original plastic insulation and use heat shrink. It makes it so much nicer, so much cleaner, 
and your your crimp actually gets done way tighter. Hmm. So that's what you're left with. Now you can see what happens inside the plastic when you're squeezing. <laughs> and then you heat shrink over that. It's a way tighter connection, doesn't come apart, doesn't get corroded, doesn't get doesn't, damaged. Doesn't crack, make sure it's nice exactly. and Exactly. Looks properly uh, connected, <laughs> squeezed on there. Cool. And then where it where you see the slit where it's bent over on the connector mm -hmm. on the eyelet, you always want to put that in the round portion of your crimper. Like that. So mm -hmm. the, the, piercing the back side and it doesn't just spread it wide open and destroy the connector. That makes sense. It leaves it nice and flush like that. Because otherwise you dig it in like a... It just flares open and then you don't crimp any of your wires, you just ruin the connector and then you've got nothing left. That's a good tip. I have some great news on the sconce front. I added and drilled a hole and uh, added a, uh, a switch there so um, these are going to go on the wall. They look just like this. Let me turn that sideways so you can see. And they just go, black goes into red, white goes into white, and they will sit right there. I just need to figure out where the beam is, and then we're in business. All right, so good news, bad news. We do have this thing wired, and it is sending some kind of signal. Is that right? What were you calling it? Uh, it's the ground resistance. So basically what this gauge does, is it sends 12 volt through the gauge and then on the ground side is where your level sensor is, is downstream. So it has pure ground right here for the light, but it has the signal that's going to the send to the actual float. And when I put my resistance on here, you can watch right there. I'm getting 157 ohms once it cleans up. 181 now. Kind of fluctuating a little bit, but that's right within our range, but our gauge is not working. Mm -hmm. We're still showing empty. That's Even right. Even though we got power, it's lighting up, but yeah. it's not giving so us our signal. Basically, it looks like I'm going to have to order a new gauge for some reason that one is not working. So that's just kind of what happens. Just want to thank these guys for coming by again. Ramblin' Love Bus. They're going to document uh, their bus conversion on Instagram. So if you are curious what a mechanic and as a lovely lady can do with a school bus, then check them out. Very so, slowly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So I hope to see you guys uh, sooner rather than later. Absolutely. For sure. And thanks so thanks much for sure. all the help. Thank all right. Here. See you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. We're picking up where we left off. Check out this. We are going to put some poly acrylic. If you don't know what that is, just call it some kind of seal. So we're going to seal this. And uh, we had a little boo-boo earlier. I took the lid off and then we spilled it on the steps here. <laughs> So that, are sealed. <laughs> <laughs> the waterproof underlayment is waterproof times two. Uh, we also taped off a couple things in here just so it doesn't drip. Uh, we now know the consistency. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, frosting, liquid frosting. And uh, yeah, we aren't doing this for good luck, guys. We are just uh, covering up the, the lights and then the tops and I don't know. Well, it's uh, in the back part. We're just going to get to work. Here is the finished product. I don't know if you'll be able to see the difference, but there is a kind of a sheen to it right now. I think we used uh, semi-gloss. <coughs> this was a recommendation of Wonderboom, the master woodworker. And uh, it's looking very luscious and rich and very yacht-like, <laughs> if that's even a descriptor. Um, I love it. It looks great. It uh, has a very nice sheen to it, and uh, we'll probably put another coat on here. And it will make the ceiling a bit more durable and waterproof. This is going to have to get lots of layers because it is a shower. And uh, it was pretty messy. <laughs> so make sure if you do this to put your lights in Ziploc baggies and uh, tape everything off that touches it. And we're just gonna let it uh, dry. I'm gonna go help out Glenn with some painting. He's modifying a trailer. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll check back in uh, later today or tomorrow.